Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial today, and this is going to be showing you how to create a simple pause menu in Unity 2018. The things that you've got to remember when you're creating a pause menu, which is whether it be something simple or more advanced, that you want to have your design, you press a button to bring it up, you want to essentially pause the game or anything else that you're wanting to do. You want to be able to interact with it if that's what you want to do. You want to be able to click or press a button to go off it. When you go off the menu, you want to re-enable all the sort of functionality of the game so you can play it again and vice versa. And so what we're going to start off doing is by creating a basic sort of pause menu UI. It won't be anything really fancy because you can take this as advanced as you want. So in our hierarchy, what we can do is we can right click and we can create UI. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a panel. And what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to go to the 2D view, press F so it scales all the way out. So we can see that imagine this entire canvas and the size of this panel is the entirety of the screen. Now that's fine if we wanted it like that because it's almost, it could grey out our screen. So what we can do is we can change the colour and maybe change it to a bit of a darker colour and just the opacity just so it looks darker. So from there, what could we do? is on our canvas, if you click left click on your canvas in the hierarchy again, right click and then we could go UI and what we could choose is we could choose panel again and what I can do from there is I can just scale this panel down and decide that my pause menu is going to go directly into the center and you can tell with the central alignment because you get the guiding lines given to you from Unity so we've got it like that. You could make sure that the scaling is even. What we can do is we can set the anchor point to the center so it never moves because that's what you want to remember with UIs. You want to sort of anchor them in places that you want. So we could call uh, the original panel back BG for background and this one as pause BG as just an example. And then what we could do from there is we could right click on our canvas, click UI and choose text and then we'll create some text and then we can drag this text above we can line it using the center line what we could do is we could just pull this out just so it's bigger we can change the text color to white maybe we can increase the font size on here and we can just say paused for instance and we can centralize it and that's fine we can scale that down a little bit more and we can put it back into the place that we wanted now what we could do is we could align this at the, in the top middle just so it won't move depending on the resolution that we have. You can change the the actual font itself. If you add a specific font from Windows into Unity, you'll be able to access it. So I've got some different ones here. So this one here, for instance, a sort of like sci-fi looking arcade one. You can see paused and we can call this pause pause text for instance and from there and what we could do from there is right click the canvas press UI and choose a button and we could scale the button up and we could align it to the center again and we could adjust the text that's there if we open up the button and go to the text we could just have this as resume we could change the font on that as well as the unipix and scale that up slightly and to resume just this is just a, a sheer example we go to the button and we can go the highlighted color as maybe something like red so you see that if we hit and play the game you'll see it'll come up like this and we'll have just our button which changes like that it doesn't do anything because there is nothing going on at the moment and then you can choose if you really wanted to you could have different buttons above here which could be something like, and you can open those up, go to the text, and you could have options and things like that. And the, But this is just the basic sort of functionality of doing it. Now we could click back on our original button and just have this as aligned to the bottom middle. And you could technically have the options aligned to the top middle again. It's there. And everything looks fine. What we could choose to do is in our canvas we could technically create a, another panel so we could go create UI panel get rid of the actual image that would be our panel and we can just use this at the top of the stack and we can just call this 
pause menu main something like that and we can drop everything that we've got in here into our pause menu main and we'll still be able to function with everything correctly but it just means that we'll be able to enable and disable our pause menu really easily so what we can do is we can right click in our project panel click create c sharp and we'll call this pause menu but because that and we can call this pause menu v2 because i've already got one of those actually in my scene and so what we can do we can open up in Visual Studio and then get rid of the starting functions that we've got. So what we want to be able to do is that be able to detect that when we actually do something, we want to be able to make the UI appear. So we want to do it on a place that will always detect our input. So we can have void update. It will create as a private void update. And then in the two curly brackets below, we'll say that if input dot get key down in brackets key code dot escape which usually is for a pause is that below there what do we want to do we want to enable the actual ui itself so what we can do is we can say that at the top square bracket serialize field private game object and we can have it as pause menu ui something like that and we just have a serialized field so we can make a private variable public and visible in the inspector and we'll say that pause menu dot set active is true when that happens but that's all well and good when we press escape it'll make it appear but what we could do is we could have a way to detect whether it's true we want to do something if it's not we we don't what we could do is we could create a couple of sets or a couple of methods which say void We'll say activate menu and one below there, which is void deactivate menu with two brackets and two curly brackets below. And what we can say for the activate menu is we can say the pause menu UI is true. We can copy this line and say um, in the deactivate, it can be false. So we'll get rid of it when we choose to do it. What we can do now is create square brackets and serialize field in there. We can say private bool as type is paused. So we're going to choose our set whether is paused is true at any one point. So if we press escape, we're going to set, we're going to say is paused is equal to um, exclamation mark is paused. So every time we press escape, it's going to do exactly the opposite of what it was originally set. So if it was true, it'd be false. If it was false, it'd be true. So if that was the case, then it'd be doing something else. And then what we can do from there is we can say that if is paused, and this is if paused is true, then what we'll do is we'll activate the menu. And then we'll say else then if it's not true it's going to be false then we'll say deactivate menu with a semicolon so let's try this out let's save that and go back into unity and when we're here we could create an, an empty game object and we could right click at the top and just reset the transforms add the pause menu v2 could be our controller so we could call this pause menu controller for an instance and then we can add our pause menu main UI elements to this. And it will say at the current moment is paused is equal to false. So what we could do is make sure that pause menu is deactivated at the beginning. Press play. Nothing's happening. We'll press escape. You can see we're now paused. And we can press select again and it will go away. So it's as simple as that for making something appear and disappear on a button press. Now. What do we want to do from there? What we can do is, for instance, with this, seeing as though this activates and deactivates, we can just close up. We're using the little a box on the left hand side. We can close the update function up because we don't need that now because that's just in the way for the moment. We just need to look at activate and deactivate. So on activate, we wanted to be able to pause the game. So to pause the game, you can just do something really simple. You can say time dot time scale is equal to zero 
And that just means that time will be moving, that time will be set to nothing, so it won't be moving at all. And then if you deactivate the menu, you can say time dot time scale is equal to one. So one is the normal time and zero is completely frozen. Also, you might want to pause any of the audio that you might be currently using. So usually, or pretty much all of the time, one, you have multiple audio sources in your game which control the sound effects that you have. But usually one of your objects, usually your camera or your player, will have an audio listener which will listen out for the actual audio that's playing. So that's the thing that we can control in terms of being able to pause or play all the audio that we've got in our game, unless you're using something like an audio mixer. So we can say that audio listener dot pause is equal to true. And then down here, audio listener dot pause is equal to false. So as an example to this, what we could do is if I've got something in my standard assets that I can use. So yes, I have got some fireworks. I'll go out of the 2D mode. Have a little look at the fireworks. They're doing that there. I need to find where my main camera is currently. My main camera is there. I'll reset the position of the fireworks. So you can see them in the uh, uh, game view here. So we'll go back into our 2D view and we can focus back in on our canvas just as the instance here we can press play and you will see the fireworks that are going off and then when i choose to press select you can see that the fireworks don't actually move anymore and what else you do when you press escape again sorry they will start again you press escape pause unpause just like so so Say that's a really easy way if you're just pressing escape, but because we've got a resume button, so what do we want to do with that? So we can go back into our code and have the resume button as it's going to just follow the same code as deactivate menu. Now, as precedence in Unity works is that normally if you don't specify, the method will be private. So you won't be able to access it anywhere else. But for the sake of this, we want to be able to use that for our button. So in front of the method type, we can say public void. So from there, from public void, well, that's for public void deactivate menu. And when we've made that public, we've also got to remember that we set the boolean back to false. So we can say that when it's off, we can say that is paused is equal false. And we can do a save there. We could go to our into our menu, into the button that we want. On the on click event, we can press the little plus on this side and it'll look for an object that we want. We can add our pause menu controller. It will be looking for a new function and we can go to the pause menu v2 and there'll be that um, deactivate menu which was set to public. So now when we press play, we'll get the playing as normal. We can press escape to pause it, press escape to unpause. Then when we press escape again, we can go down, press resume, and you can see that it resumes again. We can press escape, we can resume. So that is pretty much without any sort of extra functionality in terms of other screens or other parts of your menu. That's an easy way to create an extremely simple menu, add a few buttons, add some text, pause the game, pause the audio and be able to resume on a button press and you can take this further onto whatever you need. So hopefully this helped you out. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.